Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! My husband, male 35 and I, female 30, have been married for the past 10 years and we have 5 amazing daughters together. Because of that, I dropped out of college and have been a stay-at-home mom for the past 10 years when we had our oldest daughter. My husband is a breadwinner and I take care of all the chores and childcare. While my husband earns quite a bit of money which allows us to live comfortably, he is also obsessed with budgeting thus I typically only have enough for household expenses. For the past 5 years, I have been working on a series of books. 5 minutes here, 5 minutes there and while I sacrificed a lot of sleep, I managed to finish my series. Unbeknown to my husband, I kept it a secret because he always considered it a waste of time. It was tough but I managed to get an agent and was incredibly lucky to get a deal to have my series published. I was ecstatic and when they told me how big my advance would be, I almost fainted. It's much more than I expected for a first time deal. It's in the higher 5 digits. I haven't told my husband yet and I had to borrow money from my sister to get an accountant. Ideally, I want that money saved up should something happen because I honestly don't know the details of our home finances or for our kids future or whatever will be needed. Plus, I would love to have some spending money without asking my husband for it. Greg. However, Greg found my contract and he's now demanding I get him a new car for Christmas. A very expensive new car which would cost the majority of my advance. I politely refused saying that he didn't need a car that expensive and that money was supposed to be saved up. I tried to explain my position but he wouldn't have it. He basically called me a jerk without actually using the words. He said that because he supported me all these years I owe him and without him and his money I wouldn't be where I am now. He's told me that I either buy him a car or I have to start paying for household expenses half and half. The thing is, I would still be a stay at home mom. I don't know if my book will be a success. For all I know, this will be the only money I will ever get from my book deal because it'll flop. Am I not wrong for not wanting to buy my husband a car even though I have the money? And now for some comments. I know you have 5 kids together. I get it. And understand that a 10 year marriage is a long time to throw away. But I was married to someone for years who mentally and emotionally abused me. He demanded that I hand over all of my money to him and would never let me have a dime. He told me my money was his to do what he wanted with it. Throw away all of his money on drugs and god knows what else and even controlled the finances and hid them from me while he paid none of the bills and lost every place we tried to live in, forcing us to constantly be evicted. I wanted to get a job at the time but couldn't because he took the only vehicle we had at the time and never allowed me to go anywhere, not even with him, because he was too busy meeting up his drunk buddies who wanted to keep it a secret. Your situation is not as extreme but your husband is also abusive. He's controlling and entitled. He's extremely critical of you and doesn't respect your life goals or even any of your wishes. Even worse, he ridicules your hopes and dreams. And now that you succeed at doing something he said you could never do, he's now demanding that you spend the money on him. You are being manipulated. There is no doubt about it. You're also being blackmailed and punished by being told you'll face serious consequences if you don't give him what he's demanding. I would not buy him a car. You do not owe him a thing. The only thing you owe him is to pack a suitcase for you and your kids and to demand you either straighten up or I will leave. Not in the wrong. Oh god, this is probably the most solid not in the wrong I've ever given here. Your husband is not only the jerk in this instance, but I'm getting a major jerky vibes as well. If your family slash household's finances are separate, he has zero right to demand you foot the bill for a huge non-essential purchase. If your finances are considered by both of you to be pulled, 
I question why he only allows you the bare minimum to cover household essentials. Even putting aside the 10 gallon pocket of marinara that is him, demanding a freaking thing from money you earned doing something he pissed in your Cheerios about in the first place. I have massive concern as to why you don't know anything about your family's finances. It is not uncommon for one person to be the designated money manager in the relationship. But that absolutely does not negate your right and responsibility to know what the hell is going on with any and all accounts for your family. Not in a wrong. Explain to him what an advance is. You may have to pay money back to them if your book does not make enough sales. Invoice him. Invoice him for your time over the past 10 years of housekeeping, looking after the kids, cooking and so on. Otherwise, if you really want to be bitty, don't use his money and don't buy him food, do his laundry or cook for him. He has to do everything by himself. Oh, and congrats on the book. I, 30 female, am 5 months pregnant with my first child. My sister Annie, 24 female, is also pregnant with her second child. My husband and I have been struggling with infertility for some time, so when I found out I was pregnant, I decided to wait until I was 3 months along before telling anyone in case I lost the baby. Luckily, our daughter seems to be perfectly healthy and my husband and I are excited to be parents for the first time after trying to conceive for so long. The only problem is my sister Annie. My sister got pregnant a few weeks after I told my family about my pregnancy. And I was so happy that our kids would get to be so close growing up. So my husband and I were thinking of baby names and we both liked the name Molly, which happens to be my grandmother's middle name. My mom recently threw my sister and I a baby shower. We had a joint one, where I told her what we planned to name our daughter. And she seemed surprised and told me that Annie was going to use the same name. I told my mom that it was unfortunate but Annie had plenty of time to come up with another name. She begged me to pick another name since Annie had her heart set on Molly. I told my mom that I wouldn't budge and ended up leaving the party early to avoid causing a scene. After the party my sister called me and yelled at me for trying to steal a name that I knew meant a lot to her. She is very close to our grandparents. I suggested that Annie could use one of the other names that start with M, like Millie, Miriam, Melanie, and so on. After that, Annie and I decided to meet up for lunch to talk things over, but things got heated when I refused to change what I was going to call my daughter. Annie cussed at me and left a restaurant which I thought was immature. She can't claim a name when she might not even have a girl. So am I in a wrong here? And now for some comments. Everybody sucks. Was going to say not in the wrong. Right up until you told her to pick a different name. Neither of you have ownership of a name. That's the whole point. Everybody sucks. How about neither of you uses it as a first name and both as a middle? So many names in the whole world. I can't believe that two grown women can't find a way to make it work. Everybody sucks. My sister named her son the same name as my son. Her son is a year and a bit younger. I didn't care, it's just a name. There are no hard rules about why you can and can't name your kid. Both children can have the same name, and both adults can act like adults and get over themselves. Edit. Annie named her first daughter Jessica. She could have used Molly if it was that important. Annie is welcome to also use the name Molly. I just won't change my daughter's name as I've been calling her Molly for months now. I only suggested that Annie should change her baby's name in response to our mom telling me I should change my daughter's name. I wasn't aware she planned to use the name Molly until my mother told me at the baby shower. And she doesn't know that gender yet so I assumed she would be waiting until then to decide on a name. I also assumed she would use Joyce or Hannah after our mom if she had a girl. When my daughter was young, we introduced her to gymnastics. She was totally hooked and kept asking for more and more lessons. We encouraged her, thinking she would eventually lose interest. Now she's 12, training 20 hours a week, spending weeks after weeks, 
spending weekends after weekends competing at high-level competitions. Problem is, she is 5'7 already and still growing. She's starting to have ambition for a D1 scholarship or even Olympics. That makes me very worried. Being 5'7 basically kills her chance of going to the Olympics. D1 gymnastics scholarship is already rare. The odds of her getting one with her height is even more rare. It makes me feel so bad that our daughter is very, very dedicated. She's almost always the first one at the gym and the last one to leave. She watches replays of her routine on our drive to training. Turns down social events because she needs to train. Does extra conditioning at home. Yet I can justify plowing thousands of dollars a year and hundreds of hours in time every year to gamble on something with so little chance of success. All the hours spent at her training, driving her to competition is already causing our family life to suffer. She under-rotates her skills because of her height and gets injured more frequently than others. Her academics are suffering because of her gymnastic commitment. Her life is going in the wrong direction because of gymnastics. I think the band-aid is better ripped off earlier than later. And my husband agrees. I broke the news to my daughter. Frankly, it breaks my heart to tell her to give up something she has worked so hard for. I told her I know she's a hard worker. She would get much better reward if she channels her hard work elsewhere, like in school for example, or another sport. Hell, she plays tennis with the family only casually, yet she was able to win a few under-12 tournaments locally. If that is not talent, I don't know what is. Needless to say, she did not take that well. She cried and cried and cried, locking herself in her room, refusing to eat, saying maybe if she doesn't eat, she will become shorter. I told her over and over that I love her and I just want the best for her, but she wouldn't have any of it. I tried to reason with her, telling her chasing a dream is a privilege, not a right. No use. My husband has now softened even though we used to have an agreement. Our family is now phoning us to try to persuade us to let her continue training, even offering support for training costs and pickup slash drop-offs. If she has a right body type to be an elite gymnast, or if she's still like she is but is not struggling because of her height, I would support her unconditionally. However, that is not the case. Sometimes I feel like giving in, but to think it through, I was the person who drove her to training in competition. I am the breadwinner who paid for her training. It should be my right to call it off, especially as a parent. Help me out, Reddit. Am I in the wrong here? And now for some comments. You are in the wrong. You are taking away her passion instead of trying to come up with a compromise that still allows her to train and participate in what she loves. I was a dancer and too tall for anything but the core and ballet. You know what? I continued to dance into my late teen years. I was aware of my limitations, but dance was never taken from me. You are taking something from your daughter without even discussing it with her or trying to work something out. You are in the wrong. The tallest female Olympic gymnast is what? 5'9", 5'11"? How did you decide your daughter was automatically disqualified? And how on earth did you decide that disqualified her from continuing at all? When did you decide her interests and activities were only valid if they were profitable? I'm sure you have no leisure activities that don't lead to fame and fortune, right? How dare you minimize her interests, shame her body and withdraw your support because you do not get enough out of her activities. Not in a wrong. All the you are in a wrong people are totally unrealistic. You're spending thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours and commenters are like, but she loves it. Her grades are social life are suffering and she's injuring herself and commenters are all like, but she loves gymnastics. That's irrelevant. Parents are supposed to step in when necessary. So I, 32 female, have been friends with this group of people. 30, 31, 32 females. Since high school. I love them to death. But heck, when we plan something, they are always consecutively late. Every time it drives me crazy. One year they almost made us miss our flight home and they always say they forgot the time or thought they had more and just goofed around. 
It has gotten to the point where I will meet them because I refuse to get caught up in a drama. Last year I left to my own accord to the airport because they were all passed out and would not wake up. They missed checkout and had to pay for an extra day. Then they barely made it to the airport in time for their flights. Apparently I'm pushy for ensuring we leave at a certain time. Considering traffic, possible accidents and delays, and even looking up shortcuts in case. Throughout the years, sharing a ride with them has almost made me late to work before. Lesson learned, so now I take an extra day off just in case. Our vacations themselves are fun and easy going. So this vacation was pretty smooth up until the end. We all decided to choose a night where we would plan all of the events. Mine was Friday. It was a fairly relaxing day. I scheduled the pity for 9.30 a.m. and told them it was 8.45. They showed up at 9.15 and were surprised we got in so quickly. I reserved a table for us for lunch at 1 p.m. I told them it was 12.30 and they arrived at 12.52 with the same reaction. That night I had reserved a table for us at this really nice dining establishment for 7.30 and I told them 6.45 and they arrived at 7.10 p.m. It was a great night. Sunday, when we were going home, I said my goodbyes, checked out my hotel room, and took my separate Uber to the airport for my 2 p.m. flight home. I got home around 8 and turned on my phone to the equivalent of an assault on my group chat. Apparently, they had left late again, and one of them missed their flight and they were arguing about it. I told my roomie what was going on and what I did and she said that it was rude of me to manipulate their time like that. She knows one of the girls and told her what I did and now all of the girls are mad at me. My Friday scheduling had absolutely nothing to do with one missing their flight. Am I in the wrong here? And now for some comments. Not in the wrong. If I were you, I would say I'm too grown for this. And drop each and every one of them. They seem exhausting to be around. Not in the wrong. You planned accordingly and everyone had a great time. But what a hassle this crew is. Even your roommate. Going to be painfully honest here. These people are in their 30s and they are still chronically late. So much so that they miss their flights at airports. Everyone knows that you need to be at the airport two hours early in most instances because of security. And then to attack you for tricking them to be on time? Do yourself a favor and find some new friends if these people do not grow up soon. You're not in the wrong. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.